Hello everyone. Uh, today I've decided to do some testing on a stock CPU cooler for an Intel processor, in this case an Intel Core i3-4370, 3.8 gigahertz. Um, and really what I want to test is, is there a difference between the stock pre-applied thermal paste on the stock cooler and removing that paste and putting my own on? So am I going to get any kind of a temperature difference uh, between the two? Is there a benefit to doing it? Well, that's what I want to find out today. The cooler that I'm going to be working with today is actually not the one that came with this processor. Um, I've already used that one and the thermal paste has already been uh, used and reused and wiped off. So I actually have a cooler left over from another build uh, that I didn't use and this is actually the, the stock cooler for a higher, a higher wattage processor, um, an 84 watt i7, but it really, it doesn't, you know, this cooler is going to work a little bit better than the one that came with that processor, but that shouldn't really matter because the main difference we want to test is am I going to see a, a benefit increase to removing this paste versus uh, just using the paste as it comes. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to actually just apply this uh, this cooler uh, on that processor with this pre-applied paste. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just going to snap it in place and then I'm going to fire the computer up and do some testing. I'm going to run uh, several tests with Prime 95, get some max temperature readings. I'm also going to be monitoring the case inlet temperature just so that I know that uh, the intake temperature on the case isn't affecting the temps at all. The case will be completely closed up just like it would be a normal operation so that the test will ref reflect real world, real use conditions. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the case back up, pull the cooler off, see what kind of coverage we got with the stock thermal paste, see if it's, uh, you know, if there's enough on there. Um, you know, see if this, this little bit of applied thermal paste is, is enough quantity, if it spreads out well, if we get good coverage. Uh, and then I'm going to clean it up, put some aftermarket thermal paste on, and do the testing all over again, and compare the results. Uh, the thermal paste I'll be using is this here, it's Arctic MX4 thermal compound. Um, I've used it a lot over the years and it seems pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do, and uh, we'll get the results together and see if there's any kind of a benefit to uh, removing the pre-applied thermal paste and applying your own. Um, you know, I know there's often discussion about that, whether or not it's worth it, and uh, today we're going to find out, hopefully, or at least get a, a pretty good idea. I mean, no one test is going to be 100% indicative of all situations, but at least maybe we'll get a pretty good idea of if we're getting any kind of benefit out of it. So, all right, the cooler is mounted and plugged in. Everything's ready to go. Um, I'll close up the case, get it fired up, and we'll get to the results. All right, I've got the computer fired up and ready to go. Uh, this is with the stock cooler with the stock uh, pre-applied thermal paste. Uh, I'm going to run three tests. Um, I'll let a little bit of cool down in between each one, and then I'll start the next one. Uh, I want to run three tests just to give the thermal compound time to kind of heat up and, and set, um, just so that they're not, you know, just one test and done. Um, I will show the, uh, the final temperatures at the end of each test, but um, the test I'm going to run is the Prime 95 benchmarking test. Uh, I'm just going to run the benchmark test rather than the torture test, uh, just because with the torture test, um, a lot of times you're going to get just really, really high temperatures with a stock cooler anyways. And the benchmark test is um, a set number of tests every time and then stops. That way it's it's a pretty controlled test. It's going to be this consistent and the same every time. And that way, you know, we're not having to time it and, and all that. So, um, like I said, I'm going to run three tests. I'll show the temperatures at the end of each one. And uh, just let you know how it goes. And then we'll move on to the next... Uh, the next phase, which will be the testing with the aftermarket thermal paste. All right, the first uh, the first benchmark test is almost over, and we can see so far the max temperature hit is 76 degrees C. I don't expect that to change, uh, but it could right here at the end. We'll see. But this is the end of the test. Uh, 76 C is not too bad. Yep, and there you go. Tem the test just finished. You can see the. The real-time temps dropping off really fast there. The, uh, the max temperatures we reached 76 C, <clears throat> and we reached that pretty early on in the test, so it seems like it pretty well stabilized there and wasn't going to get any warmer with my uh, temperature gun here. 
Uh, this is an infrared temp gun, so the larger number on top is just what the temperature of what I'm pointing at, which is the monitor there. Uh, but the temp sensor probe that I have connected to the case inlet vent, uh, 64.8 degrees. It's been bouncing around somewhere around 65-ish uh, the whole time. So right about 64, 8, 65 degrees, something like that. It's the inlet temperature of the case. So <clears throat> not too bad there. We'll compare that in the rest of the tests. But just to make sure that that, you know, if, any, if there's any changes, it's not caused by the intake temperature of the case. Um, that's it. We'll start. I'll give it a few minutes to just to kind of stabilize and we'll run another test and I'll reset the maximums here and we'll see how it does. Alright, just about to finish the second benchmark test with the stock thermal paste. You can see we got a little bit warmer that time up to uh, about 78 degrees uh, unless we unless that changes here in the next second, but I kind of doubt it. Alright, uh, that second benchmark just finished. You can see the temperature dropping rapidly. Maximum temp we hit was 78C. So a little bit higher that time. Uh, so once again, I'll let it cool down a little bit. We'll start the third test. Case temperature, or case inlet temperature, you know, 65 and a half. So maybe one up, maybe a degree, maybe not even. So, And this is reading in Fahrenheit. So that's pretty cool temperatures. We're not talking 65C intake temperature or anything. So 65, uh, 65 Fahrenheit intake temperature. So, all right, the third benchmark test with the stock thermal paste is just about to finish up. Uh, looks like the max temp we reached that time was 77 degrees uh, C, 77 C centigrade. Um, so, yeah, let's see, make sure it doesn't hop above that at the last minute. <laughs> nope, test finished, everything's good. Um, so. About average that time, so 76 on the first test, 78 on the next, 77 on this one. So we're coming up with a 77 average between the three benchmark tests. Uh, that's the end of the benchmark testing with Prime 95. Uh, one last thing I might do before I pull this cooler off and change the thermal paste, I think I'm going to go ahead and load up a video editor and render a video. Um, that's a, a good a good heavy load for the processor, but it's a little bit more of a real real world load uh, than what this benchmark does. So uh, we might get a little bit more of an accurate kind of everyday heavy load temps out of that. And then I'll do the same thing with the uh, with the aftermarket thermal paste and see if we get any difference there either. Uh, but that's the last of these three benchmark tests with the stock thermal paste. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get a um, get the video editor loaded up and we'll see how that goes. And just, uh, just for reference, we're still... Uh, case intake temperature 66 degrees 65.9 so pretty close to the same area that we've been running within a degree or so and it kind of seems like as I move the sensor around it kind of dislodges it back there and goes down a little bit so I think that's just to do with the the connection on the wire but there's a temp probe in the back of the case so or on the side of the case sorry uh, but anyway um, so that's that uh, case intake temperature is pretty stable and we're getting pretty consistent uh, max temp results out of the benchmark test so that looks pretty good and uh, we'll get started on the next step. All right, so now I'm just rendering an HD video uh, with Adobe Premiere Elements. Um, it's a full HD video, 60 frames per second, uh, rendering in high quality just to see uh, what kind of temperatures I, I get out of it. Uh, this is still the stock thermal paste. And you can see that the processor usage is pretty high. It's in the upper 90s. So it is... Um, it is a lot of load. I mean, it's it's really close to full load on the processors, but you can see the temperatures we're getting so far are quite a bit lower than uh, what we were getting with Prime 95. So just something to just kind of give a little bit of a comparison on, on a, maybe a little bit closer to a real world uh, real world load. Uh, it's still going to render for another uh, looks like about another nine or ten minutes, and uh, so far the max temperature we've seen is 61C. It could go up a little bit more than that, but um, I'll just let this finish rendering and we'll see what the max temperature we hit is just rendering this video. Alright, the rendering is just about finished, 98%. Oh, yep, and there it went. It's just, uh, it's kind of ramping down. Uh, max temperature we hit was 63C and it pretty much stabilized at that. It didn't seem like it was going to go any higher. Um, the max temp was 63C from about 50% on, so. Um, and it was still kind of bouncing around from like upper 50s to lower 60s, but the, the peak that it hit was 63C, so 
So there you go, rendering uh, HD video with the uh, stock thermal paste, the peak we got to is 63C. All right, I got it pulled off of there and it looks like the coverage was pretty excellent. Um, I realize it doesn't go all the way to the corners of the processor there, but that's just because of the, the fact that the, the heat sink just has a little circle of copper. So it's just gonna be a circle on the processor. But if we look at the heat sink itself, we see that that, that paste had spread out really nicely and it was getting pretty much full contact with that uh, that copper, uh, that copper in the heat sink. So, very good coverage, honestly. Um, so I don't see any problems at all as far as coverage and so far as far as temperatures with using the stock paste. But uh, let's go ahead and put some aftermarket paste on there and see if the temperatures differ at all. All right, computer's up and running, and I'm just about to start the first of the three Prime 95 benchmark tests with the uh, MX4 thermal compound on the processor and heat sink. Um, and just one thing to note, uh, for our case inlet temperature, we are starting out a couple degrees higher than before, 67 degrees versus about 65 earlier. Um, shouldn't affect the test too much, but you know, if we do get like maybe one degree higher, uh, it could be, could be all it's from, uh, shouldn't affect the test too much. Um, <clears throat> and that's just due to the sun coming in the window all day, <laughs> heating it up a little bit in this room. So. Uh, but anyways, we'll go ahead and get the test started. Um, I have the maximum temperatures uh, reset on this program. So we're showing about 37C. That's just from when I started up the program. Uh, but everything should be good and set to go. I'll start the benchmark test. I'll run three of them and show the results of each. And we'll see how that compares to the stock thermal compound. All right, the first benchmark test just finished. Uh, you can see the temps drop in here. And the maximum temp we hit was 79C, uh, which I believe the first test with the stock paste, we hit 78C. So it's looking like with the aftermarket paste, we're about a degree higher. Uh, but again, keep in mind, here is the uh, case inlet temperature, 66.9. So we're running a couple of degrees, uh, a couple of degrees warmer on the intake temperature. So that may affect it a tiny bit. But either way, on the first test, we got 79C, about a degree higher than the stock paste. So I'll let it cool down for a couple minutes, let everything kind of stabilize, and I'll start the next test. All right, the second benchmark test with the aftermarket thermal paste just ended, and it actually hit 82C during that test. So several degrees higher than what it had ever hit before. Um, and the case inlet temperature is about the same as it was with the first benchmark test. Um, about 67 degrees now 67.1 now not a huge change there um it, it kind of seemed like it might have just been a fluke because the uh it happened pretty early on in the test and i was watching the uh, i was watching the constant temperatures after that and i didn't see it go above uh one or above 79 uh after that so um but either way that's that's the results of that test uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear the uh, clear the maximum readings, let it let it uh, kind of stabilize for a few minutes, and then run one last test. All right, the uh, third benchmark with the aftermarket thermal paste just finished up, and peak temperature was 79C again, same as the first test, and case intake temperature actually went up just a touch, uh, 67.7 degrees. Uh, again, I think it's just from the light coming in the window, just heating up the room just a little bit. Uh, so it was two or three degrees higher intake temperature than with the stock thermal paste. So that might account a little bit for the difference. Uh, either way, I mean, it's within a couple of degrees. So we got 79 degrees here, 82, I believe, and then 79. So, And then with the stock cooler, it was, I think, uh, 77, 78, somewhere around in there. So just a couple of degrees higher with the aftermarket thermal paste. So definitely not a huge drop or a, um, you know, huge increase in cooling with the aftermarket paste. So, uh, interesting results. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the video editor fired up and we'll do the, uh, we'll actually just render the same exact video we rendered last time and see what kind of temperatures we hit. That's a little bit, still a heavy load on the processor, but it's a little bit more of an everyday load. Uh, a little bit less heat producing load than what this Prime 95 does, so 
All right, I'll get that fired up and we'll see how it does. All right, so the video finished rendering and the temperature we hit uh, max was 64 C, which is one degree higher than we did with the stock thermal paste. Um, and just to take a look at the uh, inlet temperature, uh, we're still running eh, about two degrees, maybe just over two degrees hotter than it was uh, with the stock paste. So from that, I guess we can figure that um, there's not really a whole lot of difference uh, with the factory applied thermal paste or the paste you put on yourself. I know we see a couple of degrees warmer here with the aftermarket paste, but uh, for the most part, I think that's probably going to be due to the intake temperature and then just, just general uh, sample variation with the tests. Um, I mean, basically what I'm getting at is it kind of falls within margin of errors for these tests. You know, things can, can change, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to try and really defend the aftermarket paste that, you know, the numbers show that the, the stock paste did put in a couple degrees cooler numbers on a couple of the tests. So, um, I would say if you're going for a, uh, budget build and you're going to use the stock cooler, uh, then there's really no reason to, uh, swap out the paste for something else. Um, the, the stock, uh, thermal compound that's on the stock coolers is perfectly adequate. Um, now that, that may not be universal across the board. I mean, there could be exceptions to that. Uh, one thing that I have seen is, <clears throat> and I have another stock cooler here uh, that I can kind of show. One thing I have seen, and I haven't cleaned this one up completely yet, um, but now if we can maybe brighten this up a little bit here. You can see the, the little circle here uh, where the stock paste is normally applied and you have those three little lines. I've seen where those were offset quite a little bit to where um, like one line was here and then the middle line was kind of down here and then the other line was down here. And then in that case, you know, it kind of left a little bit of an area up here that uh, didn't have very good coverage. Um, so that's kind of something to, to keep in mind. Um, you know, if you see an issue like that, um, you know, it, it might not hurt to wipe it off and put something else on it. Um, just so that you get full coverage and you know, there could be cases of you know older processors where the thermal paste is dried out or something like that So there could be different, you know, kind of unique situations, but I think for the most part uh, From the testing that I've shown here the the stock thermal compound is going to work just fine for you um, Just as good if not better than than something you'd apply yourself now again, you know, I'm not going to necessarily just based on You know a couple degrees especially since the input intake temperature is a couple degrees higher Say that the thermal the stock paste is better uh, but it's certainly no worse from from this testing so so hopefully that was helpful to you maybe you can make a decision now that to not have to bother swapping out the paste um, or maybe you have a specific type of thermal compound that you prefer over the mx4 and you're convinced it's going to be better uh, that's up to you too but um, uh, those are the numbers i got with this testing um, you know I, I showed every test as it as it came so um, if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. Feel free to ask down in the comments. Other than that, I hope I covered it pretty well for you. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Take care.